Hello and welcome to all of you. You're watching France 24's tech show. I'm Julia Seeger. She's only 14 years old and she may have found a cure for COVID-19. In this edition, we speak to Anika Shibrolu, who has just won 3M's Young Scientist Challenge. She's been awarded the prize for finding a molecule that can selectively bind to the spike protein on the surface of SARS-CoV-2. And we'll also take a look at what countries around the world are doing to develop rapid and efficient diagnostic tests overcoming medical, economic, and sometimes even social obstacles. But first, every year the European Union is producing around 110 million tons of animal and vegetable waste. Some of that waste, for instance almond peels and shells, are already being used as agricultural byproducts. But could they also be used to produce state-of-the-art innovations in the construction and car industries? Fraser Jackson takes a look. This agricultural cooperative in Spain produces around 4 million kilos of almonds every year. But just 25% of that is the nut itself. The remaining 3 million kilos are mostly discarded as biomass for agriculture. But what if leftover food waste could be used as a building material? Scientists at the European Barbara Project are now turning the remains of almonds and other foodstuffs into raw materials to be 3D printed later. From lemon, for instance, we can extract a yellow colorant and also some essential oils which give both fragrance and antibacterial properties. Pomegranate has antibacterial benefits too. And almond shells, once ground and mixed with bioplastics, can give a texture and a look similar to that of wood. Mixing these materials with bioplastics and processing them produces a thread that can be printed, and researchers see significant potential for the construction and car industries. This is the mock-up of a car dashboard. This part was made with lemon peel. This one has lemon fragrance. These two are made from pomegranate. And here you have that part that we printed from almond shells. But those waiting for a lemony dashboard will have to wait a little longer. The project is now looking to scale up to a semi-industrial level, but it could still take up to five years for their creations to come to market. She's only 14 years old, but her discovery could help put an end to the current global pandemic. Anika Shibrolu recently won 3M's Young Scientist Challenge after discovering a drug that could provide treatment for COVID-19. Well, from Frisco, Texas, Anika, thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's truly a pleasure. Hi, thank you for having me. So you initially entered the competition with a project focused on finding a cure for the influenza virus. And then in the midst of the pandemic, you changed your focus and shifted your efforts on COVID-19. So tell us why you were interested in the flu in the first place. It actually started about two years ago. I was researching about the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. And I became interested with viruses, drug discovery and pandemics. And that's when I started my research on it. And a couple months later, after more extensive research, I, just, I found out about the in silico methodology for drug discovery. And I was amazed at how we could use computational methods to identify potential antivirals against pandemics and viruses. So after a couple more months, I decided to combine my knowledge of the in silico methodology for drug discovery and the influenza virus to find a potential antiviral against the influenza virus. And I was uh, almost finished with my project. I was looking for places to further develop my molecule, virologists and drug development specialists and contacting them when the COVID-19 pandemic arose. And I had never thought that after uh, researching about pandemics and drug discovery and viruses for so long that I would actually, or everyone would actually be experiencing something like that. And because of the immense severity of the pandemic and the absolute need for more effective therapies to combat the virus and its um, upcoming aftermath, I decided to pivot and change my project to target the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Now, Anika, what have you discovered exactly and what technique did you use when conducting your research? I found a molecule which can provide a potential antiviral against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So this molecule was found out of a database of about 698 million compounds and can bind to the spike protein, which is a protein on the SARS-CoV-2 virus. By binding to the spike protein, it can change the shape of the spike protein. And by changing the shape, it can stop or change the function of the protein. The, pro the spike protein's initial function would be to enter and infect host cells. And by finding a molecule which can bind and change the function of it, we would stop the virus from being able to enter and infect host cells. 
And to do this, I use the in silico methodology for drug discovery, which uses softwares, databases, and other computational methods to identify potential antivirals against pandemics and drug, drug diseases and all that, and which makes it a really effective way com uh, compared to lab testing and animal testing. So you haven't just found a potential cure for COVID-19, you've also won $25,000 in prize money. But what will you do with this money and what's the next step in developing this cure? With the $25,000, I plan to use some of it to further develop my research. So contacting virologists and drug development specialists and use it to uh, attain uh, more tools and things that I could use to more develop my molecule into a potent anti-coronavirus drug. And I would also like to use the rest of the $25,000 to promote STEM education because not a lot of kids get the same opportunities to pursue a uh, career in education in STEM as I did. Anika, you're only 14 years old. I was just saying it earlier. You've accomplished already so much. Uh, have you always been fascinated by science and how did it all start? I've been passionate about science for a long time. It started at a very young age. My grandfather used to always inspire me to do more science and just pursue a little, uh, like learn about the periodic table of elements and all of that. And then over time, it kind of grew on its own. And then about in sixth or seventh grade, I started looking into problems in the world and how I could use my knowledge of science to solve those problems. Now, what do you plan on becoming in the future? I plan on becoming a medical researcher in the future. Now, briefly, if you had one message to give out to young people your age, what would it be, Anika? My message to younger people or maybe even aspiring scientists would be to always believe in yourself, stay curious, ask any question that you find, because no question is a bad question, and take on any opportunity you see, because you never know where you're going to end up. Anika Shibrolu, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us here on Tech24. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to speak to you. Now, beyond a cure, another important aspect to battle the pandemic is to develop the right tests. They have to be both speedy and efficient to reduce the rate of contaminations. And scientists throughout the globe are racing to find solutions to current COVID-19 testing barriers. From the time taken to produce a result to the sensitivity of the test and the money needed to fund it, all pose unique social problems. But companies are finding solutions, as Jean-Emile Jamim explains. Cutting time, saving money, and maximizing accuracy. Those are the goals of several medtech initiatives around the world as researchers look for new methods to test for coronavirus. In Taiwan, tech companies Spirox and Mozentech hope to roll out a biochip by the end of the year that can detect the virus in just three minutes flat. The COVID-19 biosensor is designed to use an electric charge to read current signal changes in probing molecules, exposing the virus with an accuracy 100,000 times that of current COVID-19 rapid tests. In Abu Dhabi, meanwhile, scientists at NYU have taken steps to develop a new method of streamlined molecular testing, eliminating the possibility of producing false negative results, as well as navigating around asymptomatic cases. So this extra step, again, amplifies the viral material, and we combine it with nanotechnology. We combine it with a microflow, what we call a microfluidic device, that uses really small, small volumes of detection. So this combination, again, of pre-amplification of viral material and using microfluidic device really enhances sensitivity of the metal, I would say, between 100 and 1,000 times. Another big plus, the tests will use saliva instead of uncomfortable nasopharyngeal swabs, common in current PCR tests. Affordability has also been one of the greatest challenges facing many developing nations combating the virus. At a price of just six euros, a new locally developed test in India could be that cost-effective solution needed. The Feluda resembles a simple home pregnancy paper strip test, but uses gene editing CRISPR technology to isolate specific molecular sequences of the virus. The test also claims to deliver gold standard accurate results within an hour, crucial in a country with over a billion people and the second highest number of COVID cases in the world. As it is a paper strip based uh, test, it can be deployed in a very low resource area. You know, you understand that you know, there are lots of remote part of India where you do not have very sophisticated laboratory. As infections spread quicker than ever before, fast, affordable and accurate testing continues to be the benchmark for innovation until a proven cure can be found. 
And it's time now for Test 24 with Peter O'Brien. This week on Test 24, we've got the Xbox Series S. It's the little sibling of the Series X, and it's smaller, it's cuter, it's less powerful, but it's still a very capable console. And as well as the, form of, uh, the smaller form factor, we've also got a much cheaper price. It's 300 euros, which is around the same as the original Xbox was sold for back in 2002. It's 200 euros cheaper than the Series X and the PS5, but with this cheaper price, what do we actually get? Well, let's jump into a game here. Let's take Forza Horizon 4. And what this machine is capable of doing is going up to 120 FPS, just like its older brother, the uh, Series X, and it can reach resolutions of 1440p. Obviously, with the, lim the more limited GPU compared to the Series X, you're not gonna get both of these at the same time all the time. Uh, especially when other games start to come out which are uh, what which are really the next gen games but what it does have is this very fast storage so it's got an ssd inside it and that allows you to swap between games very quickly um, so i was just in forza horizon didn't have to quit it didn't have to reload ori i can jump straight back into the gameplay with this feature called quick resume here i am so i'm already playing another game which i think is is pretty neat obviously this storage is very fast, but it's very small. It only ships with 512 gigabytes, and about 100 of those, if not more, are taken up by the operating system, which only leaves you with about 360 gigabytes to play with. So if you're big on gaming and want to play big games like Call of Duty Warzone, for example, you're not going to have much space. However, if you're a casual gamer and you just want to load up Rocket League, FIFA, a couple of indie games, then I think this console is pretty perfect for you if you're on a budget. And that actually brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. Today, we're going to leave you with these pictures of the Mictic body instrument. It's an audio augmented reality device that lets wearers make music with body movements by strapping on two wristbands and being linked to an iPhone. Thanks for watching. <laughs>